Hello everyone, it's Eve Hunter Spade with Collective Chickadee and I'm finally back after being gone for two months. I've been MIA because, well, one, my mom was here for nine weeks and um, she has just recently gone back down to Texas and I feel like I have a little bit of my life back. Still, it's a little chaotic with a couple extra puppies in our home, but I'm loving it. I'm not complaining at all. But I'm just so happy to be in my studio and I got some really fun things to show you and I'm really excited about it. Um, a couple videos back I had showed you how I had made these um, suspended or floating specimen cards. So these next pages are kind of off of that. And I don't know how I should even, sh maybe I'll just show you the ones how I uh, made them. Um, like in line of which ones I made first. Oh my gosh, it's going to take me a little while to get back. But I hope you guys are all well. I hope this uh, coronavirus hasn't affected you all too much. And I just want you to be happy and healthy. And Okay, I just got to calm my, myself down a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the first one, um, so I'm calling these window pages with floating images. The first one I made was this with the hummingbird. I had cut the a circle out and I wanted to use this die cut that, oh, I wish I knew the name of it. I'm sure I received this from AliExpress, but it's a really pretty floral. Floral, let's see if, here's a, how do I even show you? Just really pretty detailed floral wreath. So I wanted it to extend the page. I don't know if you can see that. The page edge and I was going to have this where it was floating in the middle but it was actually larger so it worked out beautifully because I was able to ex just glue different little tips of the hummingbird on the wreath there. And then on the other side, I just cut out another wreath and glued it on top. And so it's really sturdy. And here's the hummingbird. Really sturdy. And you turn the page and I thought, oh, how fun is this going to be when someone is turning the pages in their journal and they find this, this little surprise. So I love having an element of surprise in my journals. So this was the first one I made. And since I told you I was trying to suspend it, I can even show you. <laughs> um, my little grand dog, Ayla, chewed this one up. So I already had it on some fly line, fly fisherman string. Ayla decided she needed to see if it tasted any good, that little turkey. Anywho, since this was what I was aiming for when I first made that. I made one with a scrap piece of paper and it had all this mail stuff and I'm like okay so I found some digital downloads I had that had stamps and this is what I came up with. Isn't that kind of fun? And this was just a punch circle that I have I had two of them, so I just punched it so it made this frame. I should maybe move this stuff out of your way. That way you can kind of see the background. But isn't that kind of fun? So from that little element to stick into my journal, I then went to, I think, this one. Here, this is still in the way. Here is my page, and I just cut a little strip away. So it was a full page like this, and I just took a sliver, I don't know, half an inch sliver, and then attached it back by using a die cut that I punched on the decorative side and then on the negative side so it would look pretty on both sides of these of this page 
Isn't that beautiful? I love, love, love how that turned out. So I'm definitely going to be doing this a lot, I think. I really like that it's sturdy. And I didn't use cardstock. I just used regular decorative paper. Actually, this is um, a digital download that I purchased. Here's the other. And I wanted it to flow nicely so it would go together. So if you're turning this page, you're going to see it's still the same color scheme. Alright, from there... I think I did another where it extended the pages. This page is a little shorter this time, so this won't poke out. And I cut this butterfly with cardstock, and I used two different colors. So when you turn the page, it is going to be maroon. Just a stunning effect love that. Then I, that's my little Ayla girl, can you hear her barking? I wanted to use my Tim Holtz die cut of the pine cones and the needles and I cut a different window here. I did ink up the edges a little bit so it will stand out and I do doubled it again so it's on both sides so once I glued these down I then glued another set on the back side. And this is cardstock. It, it is just really nice and sturdy. It'll be fun when you turn the page, you'll get to see what is on the other side. Let's just say, what do I have here? I don't know if you can see that. Anywho, <laughs> that was my, my thought of having windows in my pages. From there, I made this fluttering butterfly. I really am pleased with this one. I used that same little wreath die cut and I used the fly string and just adhered that little butterfly in there. And it really does flutter in there. Isn't that just pretty cool? And then the last one is nothing special. With that same download, I just used one of my die cuts, and I know I got it from AliExpress as well. And it is of these deer in the woods, and I thought, how pretty is that just to punch it on the page? I know that's nothing new but I just love having that window. It makes me happy. So my whole purpose today of this tutorial is to show you how I did this. I'm sure a lot of you are already on it and making some <laughs> after looking at these, which, I'm, which would make me super happy. Please tag me if you do make some, because um, I want to see. I want to see the fun that you're having. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and make a few. I think the first one that we will make will be with the hummingbirds that attach to the sides. What I have done was used my die cut. When I cut the die, um, I had it on the decorative side and then I cut the second one where it was the white side. That way you'll have two pieces that will mirror each other. So you can have one from the inside and one on the outside. I have this die cutting set and it's a circle so it has every size possible that will work best with this wreath. So I just kind of got the die cuts and figured, okay, this one's going to work the best. 
and I then cut my page where the circle is just a little bit off because I really wanted this die cut to extend on the side of the page. I just think it is kind of fun. It's like a tab. It can be used as a tab or I'll show like it's a tab. So that is my thinking process on that. And I want the green. I'm going to make it so some of this like some of this foliage sticks way out and I don't want that to be something that's going to be bent by turning the pages. So I'm going to find a spot where those pieces aren't sticking out as much. And I'm just going to go ahead and glue that on there. Before I do that, I do want to show you, if you were to line up your two die cuts, the way that you want them to be, it is just helpful if you put a little adhesive just to keep it um, from shifting. So at least you know there's one spot for sure matches up. And it'll just make it that much easier when you're putting it on your page. I just have to do the same thing on this side. Just like that, easy peasy. Make sure they're adhered together. And like I said, these little hummingbirds, aren't they beautiful? Let's see. This is that die cut. I bought this when Eva and I were doing a swap. I don't know. Do I want it? Maybe. I think that's more stunning to have the red on the front. So I'm just going to see where I can glue both wings and its beak where it will attach to the wreath. And puzzle that together on top of the other hummingbird here. And if you're a little off, it doesn't really matter. It just kind of makes it more of a 3D effect. So don't beat yourself up. All right. All right, there we go. There it is. Isn't that a fun little effect? Might be a little bit of glue right here. They'll dry clear. So there's one that I wanted to show you how I did. So I just adhered it to the die cut. Next one, let's go ahead and do where I split the page and glued it together. So I'm going to use snowflakes this time. And I'm going to mark with a pencil how thick I think I want it. I want to make sure these smaller ones touch the edge. So I'm going to mark here and here. So that's a nice little distance, the pages. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that little strip off. All right, so this is the strip I just cut out. Save it because you never know what you can use it for. And this is the little piece that I wanted to keep. 
here. So this page is folded in half. I'm just going to keep it folded and place this where it needs to be and I will tape it down with some washi tape just so it stays in place while I am gluing those little snowflakes in there. Maybe I should get my tape first. I just want to make sure it stays straight. So that would be my newest grand dog, Birdie. My daughter and I, in October, went to North Dakota to pick up her and my mama. And I love her. She is such a sweetie pie. All right, that should stay still. All right, I want to make sure... I want to put these I don't want to be completely straight. I'm just trying to make sure that the highest point is at the edge of that page. I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but I want to make sure there's enough things attaching that little piece together. The decorative paper I used was like a swimming pool water, so I thought that was kind of kind of pretty. All right, I think I like that. I'm going to go ahead and just glue these little ones down first. It looks a little flimsy right now, but when I glue the other snowflake on there, it will make it nice and secure. You're probably thinking, oh hell no, I'm not going to mess with that, but it is such a great effect. I promise you. Kind of crazy. Make sure this isn't stuck down. All right, I'm going to go ahead and glue the other side down. So my husband and I, like I said, we celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary. Last night we went to a really nice dinner. One of our favorite restaurants just opened up another place here in Bozeman, so we had to go check it out. And we decided that we liked the one in Livingston better. More romantic and quiet. This one I think they're kind of aiming for, like a sports bar, bar not a brawl, <laughs> sports bar. It's called the Ribbon Chop House, and I just love, love, love the one in Livingston. But it was nice, and then this weekend we are headed to Yellowstone. We're going to get a hotel in Gardner and stay the night there. This is the back side, so when I cut these out, I cut 
where you couldn't see the print. So now I'm going to just turn them over and glue them here in their spot. So it will just make it that much more sturdier. Yeah, so when we're in our Yellowstone, we hope to uh, go cross-country skiing and take my camera and do some landscape and wildlife photography. I'm going to have to shave my legs. That in itself is going to be an adventure. I always thought, oh, you know, it might hair on your legs doesn't give you any warmth, but it does keep your cold pant legs off of you. <laughs> <laughs> something to consider is it worth to shave those legs or not my husband will probably think so yes <laughs> Oy. us girls are what we do for our husbands alright I'm just going to glue this on top like so and just continue with the other snowflakes. I know this is kind of um, a lot of detail gluing. And I guess you could use a sticker machine, but with at least the glue gives you a little um, excuse and not to be so precise because you can slide it around if it's not in the right spot but I can see where a sticker machine a sticker might be like see here this isn't completely lined up but I can shift it a little bit these little snowflakes I believe I got at AliExpress too they're not all of the die cuts that I get from there work very well. Sometimes I have to put a layer of like a, a tissue, like a Kleenex, to make it so it cuts all the way through. But all in all, um, the majority of them work. Oops. One more to go. I'm so glad you guys stopped in. And I know I am doing a series of journal covers. And I haven't, please don't give up on me or just uh, be patient with me. I am finally in my studio. I have everything lined up to do those tutorials. So it's not something that I'm not going to come back to. I promise you, I, I am. I'm going to move here. And I actually, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because I got some, like I said, I have everything lined up for it. I just need to find the time to get it together for you guys. And I hope you'll come back and continue those that series with me. Okay, so here it is. It's the split page, split page page. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? I really love how that looks. So if you had a decorative page behind there, that's what it would look like. Or, let's see, or just another piece of paper behind. So there's that. Now I want to show you how I did the floating butterfly or fluttering butterfly I guess I should say. But I have it here. For this I Make sure I have the mirrored side. Oh, I don't. Hold on. Oh, I do. Okay. For this one, um, I have the window cut in the center instead of on the side. 
And if you wanted to just leave it like this, what do I have to show you? Hmm. I wonder if this one would work. If this would work. Let's see, here's another wreath. That one was kind of pretty. If you wanted to, if you didn't have like a, a wreath, you could cut script paper and do the same thing. You could, I'm trying to find what all I have over here. Just use other die cuts and have it so it's, glue it over so you have a, still the window and, a, and just put the other die cut on the back side. That's actually quite pretty. I like that. But we are going to do the fluttering butterfly. And for me to do this, I'll show you the easiest way. So I have my tie flying string. It's very, can you see it? It is very, very fine. I think it's like two weight. I am going to use some, should I do it over? Maybe it's easier if I do it on the piece of paper here. Will it be? I'm not sure. I'm going to tape this down so it's, it's nice and tight. And I'm going to grab my butterflies. I have two Two butterflies, different colors. I am just going to go ahead and put glue in the center. Here. Maybe I don't want this on the paper. Make sure it's good and tight. I'm just going to slide this in, the glue, somewhere in the middle. I'm going to add another little more glue here. And I'm going to put glue on the back side of this butterfly. This butterfly is kind of a fun thing. It's, it's embossed. It is this stamp. So it punches it out and it also embosses it. I'm just going to glue these on top of one another and have that string in the middle. Glue this one on here. I'm gluing the outsides since the inside is going to be attached to the other die cut that I glue on the opposite page. So when I glued this, I made sure that I had enough string on either side. And I am going to, once again, tape it on there a little bit Find the center, or maybe I don't even need a center. Maybe you want to do it so it's crooked. But I think I'll just go ahead and get it pretty much straight up and down. Good and tight. I'm going to go ahead and put glue where that is touching. Let's see, where do I want this?
Once again, I'm going to go on the outsides and then I'm going to go on the inside of the opposite die cut. I just want to make sure there's enough glue holding those strings down. Now I can clip this. And there we have it. I want to let that dry a little bit, but that will swing around. Isn't that pretty? All right, we got that one done. What else did I want to show you? Mm, for this one, you know, all I did is cut a very large circle and then I used a die cut. I have a couple different large die cuts um, that, you know, you could place across just like how I showed you with that pretty greenery here. I was thinking another fun one that I'll probably end up doing is a moose. How cute is that? Isn't that fun? So I'll definitely have to have a moose in the window. And my little friend Patricia Bresnan Look what I want to do. <laughs> we got to have some doxies, don't you think? So I already have the little black doxy. All I need to do is glue the little brown doxy or red doxy on here. I knew Pat would like this or Patricia. I don't know what you prefer to go by, but she is my little friend that I've met on YouTube and on our art groups and we both love doxies because I have two of my own. Ayla, my little grand dog, is a little chocolate and caramel doxy. Mine's black and tan and then I have a little red one. And I think Patricia has a black and tan one as well. But look how cute this is going to be. Maybe you can't tell. So, I just got to get it attached. But how fun is that one going to be? <laughs> so, really anything will work. Whether it's a die cut, you could use real rubber stamps. You could use... I mean, not rubber stamps. Uh, you can use real stamps. You could even have like charms that dangle down from your little window. Really, the, the possibilities are endless. Let's see. What do I have here? This is just another little pretty die cut that I got from AliExpress, I'm sure. But it's just so sweet and fun to have a element of surprise in your journal when you turn each page. And I guess um, that is my, my sharing today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was something new that you will give a try. They are so much fun to make. And I know some of you are like, uh, you're going to say, oh, heck, I'm not going to do that. It's too much work. But look. It, it is fun to make and it is gives you the wow effect for sure. So I guess this is my sharing today. I hope you come back. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe and check out my other videos I have in the archives. And if you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear from you and um, happy that you stopped by.
So until next time, warmest of wishes. Bye.